Las Vegas food and beverage professional, and I'm here with Chef Hubert Keller, and you're doing Hashtag Love in Las Vegas, and I'm just really excited to hear about it. You want to tell me about what's going on with this show? Absolutely, yeah. So when it comes to the original show, uh, Secrets of a Chef, right, that we has about 100 episodes that we shot already. So I think uh, the new season coming up is really we kept, we're keeping the idea of uh, the Secret of a Chef but basically featuring also my favorite cities in the world oh, and wow. the secrets. And uh, we have started with Rio de Janeiro, which was, and also cities where I lived in, right? So Rio de Janeiro was one of them, and then we went back home from to Alsace, east part of France, where I'm from. So there was like an amazing show, and then I felt like uh, Vegas, since I live here, right? It is also my city. So showing also Las Vegas, but I think the secrets of Vegas, because mm -hmm. when someone, a viewer, is uh, watching a show and is from, let's say, somewhere else from the United States, and right, watches the show, comes to Vegas for the first time or the second time, is usually it's not we're not featuring what if you would Google with 10 best restaurants or the whole thing, right? Is some of the secrets also what Vegas really has to offer. And very often I'll be asked, uh, chef, where do you eat out when you go out? Where do you have a drink late at night? Or uh, who are your friends and who are you drinking right, with? Right. <laughs> That's what's featured in the show. And I think when we did the same thing in Rio Janeiro, I found like friends of mine where I used to live there and they took me on a tour. They showed me Rio Janeiro late at night and early in the morning and and so that what the show is about Vegas and what I really wanted to show is of course some of the main main restaurant on, on the street also of course but a personal connection like William Serrano we used to work together in San Francisco many many years ago right and then you have Jean Jo from the Eiffel Tower we worked together in France in 1970 so you can imagine and who would have known we end up ending up here in Vegas together, right? So every yeah, restaurant so was, yeah. that I visit, yeah, yeah was yeah. a connection. And then I think what was important for me to, to show in Vegas is that new movement, right? Where chefs, young chefs that have worked for us on the strip in, in, in our restaurant and finally then branching off, found investors and then created a restaurant off the strip. And I think that's what really closes the circle when it comes to like a major restaurant city of Vegas, right? So far we had the Strip, we had all those beautiful restaurants, and now we're closing the circle, having all these neighborhood restaurants like you would find in San Francisco, right? And that's what I really wanted to show as well. That's beautiful, that's so wonderful. And, and Vegas, you're so right, it's, it's the mecca of food and we've had you know so many wonderful people that have just done beautiful things here with food so I'm, I'm really so pleased to even be in your company. Oh, I've no, no. been a fan <laughs> for so long you know going <laughs> all the way back to Sonoma California my husband was in uh, culinary school actually and then he was a uh, chef at uh, Willis Seafood in Hillsburg. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well, well, well. It was, you know, 2007, 2008, just before we left and then we moved everywhere else, you know, but it was it was a really great time. And one of the things I really remember was, was you mentioning that you were in Brazil and you just mentioned that right now. That's right. And tell me about that Brazilian experience because Brazil is something special. Uh, yeah, Brazil. Brazil was an interesting experience, right? And it was uh, amazing to uh, that was in uh, 79, 80, so mm -hmm. quite a while ago. And in those days, I was working for uh, like chefs really known, uh, three star chefs in France, like Roger Verger, Paul Bocuse, and Gaston Le Nôtre. And those were the three of chefs who really exported the French cuisine. When you know, when some of the French people were complaining that if they're eating in the restaurant, the chefs are never there, they were probably right a little bit, right? But on the other hand, in those days early on what they did not quite understand is we needed chefs to export French cuisine and to make the French cuisine known around the world. Wow. And we, when I say we, uh, in those days we were really young and we were embraced by those chefs and they sent us out to, to different countries and to represent them and to export the cuisine. So, Sao Paulo, uh, so interesting enough that Roger Berger, Gaston Le Nôtre and Paul Bocuse all went to, to Brazil and mm -hmm. opened restaurants almost the same time. And we were really young and represented the chef. So it was an amazing experience, right? And after that experience of Brazil, that's when uh, Roger Verger decided opening up something in San Francisco and then asked me to, from, from Brazil coming then to, to San Francisco, operate the restaurant, train chefs, 
and then I was supposed to go to another project which was in Marbella in Spain and I fell in love with San Francisco I mean, it's, it's a song but it's really true and I never left San Francisco and like four years later that's when I started an uh, Fleur de Lis restaurant that I had with my wife right, for 28 years and, and then the ball kept on going but it was it was an interesting time yeah oh wow beautiful <laughs> and then tell me a little bit about how french cuisine and brazilian cuisine may have even become incorporated a little bit into the restaurant that you were doing in brazil because it had to be some kind of a transition for the brazilian people themselves yes it was a transition for brazilian people i think it was also a transition a big transition for myself mm -hmm. uh, because you know when uh, prior to move out from from france and in the different restaurant that i worked everything was very precise everything was caliber uh, let's say small example when you ordered like uh, zucchinis and you said i need a case of 36 zucchinis you knew that every zucchini looks alike is the same and then we cut the zucchinis made the little garnishes everything was perfect perfect then we move into and then that's how we totally were trained when it comes to you buy some lobster if it's a pound and a quarter pound and a half and here as young young chefs we're going to Brazil and I placed an order of lobsters and then a big case of lobster came to the kitchen and I had like literally like a 25 year old lobster in it and I had a baby lobster that probably was even illegal to fish in those days right mm -hmm. and we had to put the menu together mm -hmm. so that was a challenge wow. for us it was like either it was a moment that I was said I cannot do it, I'm quitting, right? <laughs> <laughs> or then, and I, but I, was, I had a contract, I had to do it. But then came the time I said, okay, let's open up our eyes, our mind, and being more open and more receptive. And suddenly we were really, I think we were really cooking when we say le retour du marché, like from the market, what really comes to our kitchen. Oh, yeah. That's what we were really doing. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, uh, like uh, when they were fishing, like the fish, and, a couple of hotels had opened up in Sao Paulo in those days and it became a little revolution in Brazil, a good revolution, right? A cultural revolution, food revolution. When they caught a couple of fishes, we literally had to offer money on it that I can get that fish, right? Oh, Otherwise the other one would get it. <laughs> so we were fighting for our big fish and I finally ended up on a monster fish in, in the kitchen. So, okay, now I have to figure out something what to do with the fish. Oh my gosh, so, so it beautiful. was an eye opener, right? And mm. being classically trained in France, I think, in, thanks God, I was exposed to, to that and that was that helped me later on then to move move around and then being way more receptive and way more open, right, and more creative too. Wow, that's a great story, I <laughs> yeah. love it, I love it. So you're out here answering phone lines and, and just becoming a part of the whole, you know, PBS family. Absolutely, and, and yes. You've been a part of the PBS yes, family yes, for years yes. and years. So, Tell me a little bit about what, what this is going to do to help, you know, PBS. I think it's, I don't know if it helps PBS because PBS really, I mean, we all need help, but PBS is so in place, right, but it's so generous that I have to say uh, when uh, then we started the, some of the, from, from Mendocino, when we started then moving to Vegas and finding a studio, PBS, when the building actually opened up, mm -hmm. they were so generous, right, when with Marty Poor, my producer, when we approached them and seeing that eventually we can set up a cooking program oh. uh, here in, in the building, oh. right, they were so generous, they literally gave us a studio. And interesting enough, the studio we were in today, yes. that was the studio where all my set, the whole cooking setup was in wow. for years, right? And, and so they were so generous. And when we finished the series each time the season, we didn't have to break down the, the set. We didn't, they just were, again, so generous. They left the set, everything was in place. And then when the new season, we just came back in. We had professional lighting, we had soundproof, we have everything. So it made the show just so much better. So I think I owe a lot to PBS in Vegas. Right? That's amazing. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's a great story. See, I had no idea. I always thought that, you know, PBS ran on, you know, a lot of the grants and donations, but I, I think that's a, a large part of what it is, but they're so generous and, and yes, they, they, they do help, you yeah. know, our community yeah. in so many ways. And, yes, and I, I love that you're such a big part of that. So <laughs> thank that's, you. that's thank so you. interesting, thank you know? Thank you. So tell me about your restaurant, you know? 
All right, so Where restaurant is, uh, it's, uh, so it's Fleur, at uh, Fleur by Hubert Calais and Marie Bay, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is now 16 years we're running a restaurant. So, so it's wow. uh, for Las Vegas, that's a long time, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, sure. but it has been an amazing run, right? And uh, Marie Bay has been very supportive and the whole city has been very supportive, right? And then also the Burger Bar, which is in Mandalay Place, which is, oh, right. was really originally the original burger concept, right, by a chef, because we, when we talk about the burger bar, still today we kind of smiling the way that everything happened because it was literally an accident in that sense. Uh, it was not a plan that uh, I, I had. And uh, burger bar, it's not just me saying it has been written and everything. Burger bar is really that little place mm -hmm. where who started the whole gourmet burger mania in America, right? And right. it started here in Vegas. Oh my it's probably the only concept that has been, was born in Vegas, I like get brought out. When I say brought out is, you know, like 16 years ago, uh, there was not a single chef who would have put a name on a burger. Why? Because in our industry, if you are a loser, we just say, just go and flip burgers, right? But you don't know what to do anything <laughs> after. So it was not the trade of, not a sign of a success, right? And Daniel Boulou, French chef from New York, right, started one burger in his very upscale restaurant, and it was the DB burger, Daniel Boulou burger. Mm -hmm. And I could see very quickly in a matter of months, it was like a brush fire through the entire country. Everybody talked about like an expensive burger, a French chef made in, in New York, and everybody loved it, right? Oh, because it was so the perfect burger, right? Mm -hmm. With great ingredients, right? Not just a fast food burger. And I sensed that and I felt like maybe just putting a concept together, chef driven with and just making burgers, but the entire concept, right? Mm -hmm. And I I still remember the, the, the morning that I opened up the electric gate when the gate went up of that burger bar, that concept, and I thought to myself, seriously, that was probably the stupidest thing I ever done. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> because because you know there was no I had no experience about burgers at all and like I said uh, I was I was concerned that the critics will actually knock me down more than actually helping me mm -hmm. because I was afraid that the critic would say, "Well, he did only like five star restaurant, white tablecloth, fancy, fancy restaurant, and French cooking. What does he know about burgers?" And now he does burgers, and then you could see very quickly. In 16 years ago, every casino had, of course, had an upscale restaurant. French or Italian, right, had a buffet and then had like a steakhouse mm. and nobody had a burger bar. And today when you look at in Vegas, every single casino has also a burger joint, a burger restaurant. That was five, and signed by a chef and that was after that little place. And then you see now in the United States, I think every restaurant, every fancy place has at least a slider. We, we used to make fun like when uh, Wolfgang Park is on TV, you know, during the Oscar mm -hmm. in, in the past years, and he used to say how many kilos of caviar was used in one night, and everybody was so impressed. And now Wolfgang actually talks about how many sliders he has served, right? <laughs> because people got so into it, right? And so it's on every mm -hmm. social level, right? So it's pretty fun, and it started all here. Wow, I love that. You're such a trendsetter. Not only are you a great chef, and you have such a background, but you're a trendsetter, and you did something that just exploded, yeah, and I, was, I love it. I was pretty so lucky. <laughs> well, you know what? Luck is a big part of who we are, so yeah, it's a great yeah, thing, you know? Thank you. But, you. but your talent always comes, you know, it always props your luck, so it's a great thing. So, thank you. So good, so good. Um, so I find that, you know, people who are very talented in one area, also have talents in other areas. What do you like to do? What are your talents? Uh, my talents, uh, I actually like music as well. Oh, nice. So uh, when I was younger, yeah, I played, I played a few instruments, and oh, uh, nice. so I loved it. And then, uh, then I got into DJing a little bit. Obviously, part You're of the DJ. show. Yeah, oh, so, that's oh. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet. So, I love it. So it started very small and uh, and then, I mean, it's still small, but then, uh, yeah, I was getting interested to do it and then finally my wife one day got me an entire real professional DJ set up at the house and, Ooh, and then I loved it and <laughs> the neighbors probably hated it. <laughs> and then it started, right, and then, and I was starting DJing with a good 
help of a friend, Frenchy Le Freak, actually that was his DJ name and is his DJ name in, in, in San Francisco and he used to DJ here at Club 54 in those days and wow. that's how we get involved, how I got involved in it and then, wow. and then uh, I, I DJed in like some Ruby Sky. All You're space. a Club 54 alumni? Yeah. What's up? Oh, What's so here? <laughs> and then when Taboo, when that was my first First time I DJ in Vegas was at Taboo when Taboo was the lounge, right? At wow. and, and then I was in Web Republic, I was at Skyfall. I mean, yeah, several places just for fun. Just wow, for fun. you are the man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I'm so impressed. This is so great. And you're just amazing. So, yes. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having Peter. me. Really, really. You know, thank you. I thank you. Take up more of your time. Thank you for the support. I do appreciate you all, right. know, all the information and everything that you wanted to share with our people and um, our readers. And hopefully, they'll, we'll have the video out, you know, right yeah. away. And, and we don't even have to wait for the magazine. Wonderful. I want thank people you. to know all about Thanks your new show and everything else, okay? Wonderful. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.